What's going on everybody? I'm your host Jason Park and behind me I have a 1994 M edition Mazda Miata. That little roadster has sold over a million units. That baby's platinum. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Luca aka LD. And this is why I drive a 1994 Mazda Miata. I had, a few I had a few criteria when uh, picking out my car. Uh, that was rear wheel drive, stick shift manual, uh, and preferably a convertible. This thing checked off all those boxes, plus uh, it's the M edition, so it's got the 1.8 liter. So that gives it a, I, I believe it was about five to 10 horsepower, more than the, than the 1.6. Uh, and it comes with a, a Torsen limited slip differential. From the factory so that baby gets loose and it's, it's a lot of fun well i didn't really have too much choice when it came with the color i just i'm gonna change it anyway i mean as you can tell she's she's not beautiful right now at least but uh she's actually blue at the moment but uh i'm actually gonna turn her into british racing green with a little uh a little white stripe and miata logos on the side it's gonna look it's gonna look epic so far, uh, the only mod I've done, and I hate to admit this, but uh, I am now a person with the Instagram handle on the back of their car. Um, the reason being is because there were some pretty girls behind me and I think they were trying to get my attention, but I was too busy, I was on my way to work, so I couldn't like say hi or anything. So I needed a way for them to say hi. Uh, so I just, I put my contact information on the back. Uh, so yeah. That, that's pretty much the only mod I've done so far, uh, but I plan, I got a new bumper, I got a new door because there's a lot of body damage on the car. Uh, so I have both of those in my garage just waiting to get painted. Um, it's also got a new front splitter on it as well. So I'm definitely gonna lower it, put it on coils. Um, so coil overs, front splitter, everything else pretty much stock. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I may turbo it. Maybe. Maybe. That's if I turn it into a race car, which I haven't decided what I'm going to do. But maybe turbo. Craziest thing I've done in the Miata. Uh, I mean, okay, so she's a 94. She doesn't have traction, tr traction control, no ABS. Uh, there's been a few times where I've taken her around a corner too fast when it's raining and uh, basically had to drift that entire corner. And if I didn't drift the whole corner, I was gonna wipe out. And uh, that's about the craziest thing I've done with it. Uh, other than that, mainly when I get out of work, I go to the bank, I go past the bank, whip a 180, and then pull into the ATM. Other than that, I try to, you know, stay, stay, stay legal. <laughs> So, I've only had the Miata since April, uh, but greatest memory of the Miata. I mean, so far I've taught two of my friends how to drive stick in the car. Um, other than that, I haven't really done anything. I haven't really done, I've, I've run out of gas twice. <laughs> so the, the Miata is probably one of the easiest to, easiest to control cars because you feel everything. Everything's mechanical. Everything, like, you, the, the car tells you exactly what's going on, um, which is why I've been able to drift through those turns when I get loose, because I can feel the tires breaking up behind me, and I'm able to counter steer it and, and get, it, get it where it's supposed to be going. Um, it handles very well in the corners. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it, and I feel like if I got fatter wheels in the back, or fatter wheels in general, it'll fix this, but at high speeds on the highway, 
that thing just feels like it's blowing all over the place. So if you go on a lot of road trips, don't get the Miata, or at least wait till I get bigger wheels in this car, because I'm going to do that, and I'll let you know if it happens after that. So cons of the Miata, I've driven a Prius, and it is just, just barely faster than a Prius, and that's driving it to the max with the manual transmission. Uh, so it's not very fast. It feels fast, but it's not very fast. Um, and then, like I said before, with the traction control lack or lack thereof, and the Torsen limited slip differential, causing it to kind of, it does not handle in the rain very well at all. Like, when I'm driving in the rain, if I'm on a hill and I gotta go from a stoplight, the back tires spin, I go around a curve too fast, it kicks out usually. So those are the main cons. Also, you know, I have a painting at my house in North Carolina that I really want to take down, but I can't fit it in my car because it's too big. So st <laughs> if you have things that you need to fit in your car that are big, just just get a different car because it's not, you can't fit it. I love the drivability of it. I love how easy it is to control. Um, it It's an old 90s car, so it's got that, you know, it always just kind of smells like oil, which I don't know why I like that, but it smells like oil and gasoline all the time. Uh, and this one specifically, I mean, it, it's low miles. The interior is in great condition. Like, it's it's just a great car to drive. Uh, the, the shifting is amazing. Uh, aftermarket support is, there's a lot of aftermarket support. And surprising enough, so I used to have a Mustang. And then I totaled the Mustang, long story. Uh, but I pulled the back spoiler off the Mustang. Is an 05 Mustang. Took the stock spoiler off the Mustang, and I was going to just put it in my room and hang it up. But, you know, being a car guy, I had to test fit it on the Miata, you know, just to see, see what, excuse me, see what it's going to look like. And uh, I was like, it's going to be way too big. It's not going to look good at all. It low-key slaps. Like, I want to get your guys' opinion. I want to get Jason's opinion. I need a lot of opinions on this because it it might look weird, but it fits. So, I don't know. I'd say don't buy one when it's already been heavily modified. And if it's been he heavily modified and has a lot of miles, I'd try to stick with uh, something less than 200,000 miles, definitely. I mean, they're very reliable cars, so they can go well above that, but... I mean, stay under 200,000 miles, definitely test drive it and get get an idea of who you're buying it from. Make sure that, you know, they're not out racing it, doing any crazy stuff in it. And if they are, make sure that they know what they're doing as far as repairs and stuff like that. Time for me to get my hands on this Mazda Miata and do a little drive. All right guys, so right now I am in Luca's 94 Mazda Miata M edition and I'm gonna tell you guys all about how it drives. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, I can tell you the seat sits kind of high where when for your vision looking out of the car, you kind of get a little bit of the, the uh, convertible top. Car is very light, it feels light from the moment you get into and the moment you start putting your foot on that clutch. It was very light. Very easy to drive. Uh, transmission is pretty smooth. Clutch is pretty smooth. Thank you, ma'am. So right now there is a nice amount of traffic, but we are gonna make the Mazda Miata do what it do. So the funny thing about the MX-5, you know, when they made this car, this is the same time period where they had the MX-3. The MX-3 came out with the world's smallest V6 with a 1.8 liter. They also had the MX-6, which is highly underrated because it had a 2.5 KLDE V6 motor. Uh, and you could get the Japanese motor with the KLZE pushing 200 horsepower at the time, which was a lot of horsepower. The only downside to the MX-6 was that it was front wheel drive and now rear wheel drive. The MX-6, the Mazda Miata, the MX-3 
we're all brothers and sisters to the glorified FDR X7. But what you can tell about the 90s uh, Mazdas is they all share very similar body lines. Now, the Mazda Miata, you have a compact roadster that was, um, that came from the British Roadster. And you can feel it right away when you drive this car. At lower speeds, there's a certain level of confidence in the car just by how nimble it feels. Now I say at low speeds because I have driven this car before at higher speeds. And when you drive this car on a freeway, it feels like a feather. And you don't necessarily have confidence in it at high speeds, but at low speeds, this car is absolutely fantastic. So the getup isn't anything crazy, right? You don't have a big displacement motor. It doesn't, you know, wow you in the sense of like brute power, I wanna go from zero to 60 and I wanna get there in three seconds. But what it does do is it allows you to have fun and use all of its horsepower. Every single pony that this car has, it will allow you to use in a manner that's fun, in a manner that's safe um, and reliable because these motors have been known to go 300,000, 400,000 plus miles. And nowadays, if you're looking for a used Mazda Miata, you're looking to spend at a minimum of at least $3,500. And that's for a high mileage Miata. So these cars, their resale value has uh, held up pretty well. And, you know, they're beloved by their fans. They've sold over a million units of the Miata and for good reason because if you're fresh out of high school, if, you know, you just want a weekend warrior, the Miata's perfect. You drop this top down 65, 70 degrees out, perfect spring, fall weather, you're gonna have a blast. So the Miata, I can completely understand why it has so many fans around the world. Now I'm gonna do a U-turn up here and I'm gonna get on it for you guys just a little bit because the thing about light cars and the reason why horsepower on paper for a lot of vehicles don't connect or correlate to the experience is that when you have a very light car, which the Miata is, horsepower almost becomes irrelevant because the fun factor replaces the sheer force of a lot of power. Everything about it, you feel everything in this car. First, second, third, fourth, you feel everything. So when you talk about, you know, the word visceral always comes up when people review cars and they talk about the driving experience. It doesn't become more visceral than a Mazda MX-5 or an S2000. They're right there, they're yin and yang. They're right there in the same class, except the S2000 just has more power. It's kind of like a big brother, little brother. But the Mazda Miata, fun factor, if you had that on a scale of one to 10, the Mazda Miata would be a 10 because you can have fun in this car safely. It's time for the POV view. So before you guys leave, make sure you check out the trailer to Four Amigos. I played Leo, so you'll be seeing me. If you watch the movie when it comes out, that car is featured in it. Leo, get the door. Got it. Sometimes. You have to become the monster to save the one you love. Your mother's labs came back in. The cancer is spreading fast. She does need surgery. Um, without that payment, tomorrow she's going to be discharged. In two days, we're gonna rob Chino. I 
mean, there's got to be another way. There is no other way, Leo. If we don't rob Gino right now, my I'm mom is good as dead. I'm go All right, now for the moment you guys have all been waiting for. Let's put this baby on this baby. I'm surprised at how well it how well it actually fits. Like I'm thinking that's a good mock-up. 